Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss the major motions at the elbow joint, which is really just two, and that's elbow flexion and elbow extension. And this is going to be another antagonistic pair of muscles uh, that you probably are very familiar with. They're some of the more common ones to discuss. And those are the biceps brachii and the triceps brachii. All right, so first of all, we've got our elbow joint. And let's first talk about the biceps brachii. The biceps brachii are the agonists of elbow flexion, which is the process by which the elbow joint's joint angle decreases. Okay, So if you imagine your elbow joint kind of extend it out to 180 degrees and curl your arm upward, so bend your elbow. That process is elbow flexion. And when you notice your elbow bending, uh, that's going to decrease its joint angle. And that's defined as elbow flexion. And the major agonist of this motion is the biceps brachii. Now, the biceps brachii gets its name because uh, it's a two-headed muscle. So bi means two, and sep, or seth, as you'll sometimes see it, is head. So it's a two-headed muscle. It has a short head and a long head. The short head is the medial part of it, and the long head is actually the lateral part. And the reason I mention this is they, because there's two heads, there's actually two origins of the muscle. Okay? So for the biceps brachii, uh, the short head actually is going to have its origin on the coracoid process whereas the long head is going to have its origin at the superior glenoid fossa. Okay, so short head here is the coracoid process, and then here is going to be the glenoid fossa, the superior part of that. However, they're eventually going to join up both heads of the muscle, and they're going to insert at the radial tuberosity. So that's just a specific part of the radius. And so when the muscle contracts, it's going to pull the radius upwards like this, toward the origin, and you're going to have elbow flexion. All right. So here's a look at a particular exercise that is going to utilize the biceps brachii, which are sometimes in slang referred to as the Arnold Schwarzenegger muscle because former Mr. Olympia Arnold Schwarzenegger had very prominent biceps. And this is the bicep curl, and so he's going to be taking this barbell and he's going to be curling it upwards, and so the joint angle of, that, of those elbows are going to decrease. Okay. Now another exercise that also is going to facilitate elbow flexion is going to be chin-ups, which most people think of working the back for that, the latissimus dorsi, but actually when you curl, when you chin yourself up towards the bar, your elbows are actually decreasing in joint angles, so you're also performing an elbow flexion whether you realize it or not. Now there are some other muscles that are going to be accessory muscles to elbow flexion that are also going to facilitate it. Those are going to be the brachialis, coracobrachialis, and brachioradialis, of which we'll be able to see in our next picture, the first two. So let's actually go here. So here's a look at the biceps brachii. This is obviously the largest of these muscles. Um, here's the short head, and then here's the long head of the biceps, and both heads are actually going to fuse and have the same insertion at the radial tuberosity. The biceps are the superficial muscles. If we look over here kind of behind it and a little more medial, we actually have the coracobrachialis. And this gets its name because it runs along the brachium and it's going to have its origin at the coracoid process just like the short head of the biceps brachii. So this is your coracobrachialis. Now if we rotate this a little bit and look more on the lateral side, this is also a deeper muscle that you really can't see very well. This is the brachialis, and it's going to have its origin just on the humerus, um, and then it's actually going to um, insert down on the radius as well, specifically the coronoid process, coronoid process of the radius. But these three muscles, and in addition, the brachioradialis are going to be the major elbow flexors, but obviously the biceps brachii are the largest and going to be the strongest of those group. Now, let's switch gears and look at the triceps. So while the biceps are the anterior muscle, the triceps are going to lie more posteriorly, on the posterior side of the humerus. And the triceps are similar. They're a three-headed muscle. So they have a lateral head, which is obviously lateral. 
There's a medial head, which is kind of hard to see, uh, but it is more on the medial side. And then there's a long head, uh, which is a very, which is probably the largest part of the triceps and one of the more visible parts um, if you have a low body fat percentage or large triceps. Okay, and again, all three of these heads are going to fuse into one muscle and insert on the olecranon. In fact, if we go here and look at the triceps brachii, we see that uh, the lateral head, the long head, and the medial head all have different origins. For example, the lateral head is going to have its origin at the posterior humerus, long head is infraglenoid fossa, and medial head is going to be the posterior humerus, but all three of these insert at the olecranon of the ulna. Remember, the olecranon is part of the ulna. Okay, if we actually um, look at that, what that looks like, let's go to the triceps. Here's our triceps, and we see right here on the olecranon, which is that bulge at the elbow joint on the ulna, they all insert here because they all fuse into the same muscle. It's just the origins have the three different heads, okay? But this is going to be your triceps, and the triceps are going to be the major muscles involved in elbow extension. So that's the opposite. That's where you're actually increasing the angle of the elbow joint. It's increasing. So elbow extension, in other words, would be starting with your arm in the completely uh, curled up form and then extending it out to 180 degrees, okay? Fully extended. That process is elbow extension and when forced, it's done through the action of the triceps brachii. It's also assisted, it's worth mentioning, by a muscle called the anconius, a very small muscle that's located right here. Um, you actually will not be able to see it in this image right here, but the anconius is an accessory muscle, um, much smaller than the triceps brachii, but it does also facilitate elbow extension. And a couple exercises that would be notable to uh, work on the triceps brachii would be dips. So dip stations are actually going to involve um, elbow extension when you push yourself up. And then tricep extensions, obviously any motion where you're forcibly trying to extend the elbow, those are going to be working the triceps brachii. And again, we see an example right here of a tricep extension. This is one form of it with a circular weight. This woman starts out with her elbows more bent to 90 degrees, and she lifts the weight up, and you see that her elbows now are closer to 180 degrees. And so that motion is facilitated by the triceps brachii. All right? So hopefully this video gave you a good grasp of the difference between the elbow flexors and the elbow extensors, or biceps and triceps. Um, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.